you. So come for me. Good morning. If you're watching this later than uh, nine o'clock on YouTube or the other thing, Facebook. Facebook that's what it's called. Uh, then great. Um, we're in church, uh, and it is just after nine o'clock. And um, but it doesn't want to stream live. So there you go. Um, so you'll get a slightly delayed, or not at all. Who knows? Um, mystery. It is a mystery. So the Sarah and I. Sarah, like a good curate, has been here since when I told her to. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Whereas I was walking up the road. So there we go. So this morning, we're, um, we we use the app and we're looking at, um, we're going to be using Psalm 80. And we'll be continuing in our readings in Luke, starting at seven, chapter 17, verse 20. And today in the church, we remember Benedict of Nursia who is abbot of Monte Cassino and a father of Western monasticism in circa 550. And that's as much as any of us know about him, I think. Oh, we will think about that later, but let's crack on. So, just as Sarah has been doing in the stillness of this place previously, let's just welcome God to our hearts, give thanks for what we've been up to at the weekend. Look forward to this week. So here I will say the song of God's compassion. I will turn at verses. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will always accuse us, neither will he keep his hand forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. As the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old, and endures forever on those who fear him, his righteousness on his children's children. On those who keep his covenants and remember his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 8. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, you that led Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your mighty strength and come to our salvation. Turn us again, O God. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry at your people's prayer? You feed them with the bread of tears and give them abundance of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbours and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Turn us again, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt and drove out the nations and planted it. You made room around it, and when it had taken root, it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow and the cedars of God by its boughs. It stretched out its branches to the sea and its tendrils to the river. Why then have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar out of the wood tears it off, and all the insects of the field devour it. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold. Cherish this vine which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you made so strong for yourself. Let those who burnt it with fire, who cut it down, perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man at your right hand, 
the Son of Man made so strong for yourself. And so will we not go back from you. Give us life, and we shall call upon your name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Reading from um, Luke this morning starts at, uh, it's chapter 17, verse 20. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is, for in fact the kingdom of God is among you. And he said to the disciples, the days are coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man and you will not see it. They will say to you, look there, or look here. Do not go, do not set off in pursuit, for as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must endure much suffering and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so too will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed all of them. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day that Lot left, Lot left Sodom, it rained fire and sulfur from heaven and destroyed all of them. It will be like that on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, anyone on the housetop who has belonging to the house must not must not come down to take them away. And likewise, anyone in the field <clears throat> must not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Those who try to make their life secure will lose it, but those who lose their life will keep it. I tell you, on that night, there will be two in one bed, one will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding meal together, one will be taken and the other left. Then they asked him, where, Lord? He said to them, where the corpse is, there the vultures will come. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, please, God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust, Trust in, in the Lord, Lord with all your heart. Your heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trust, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as me. To you this week, people looking forward to uh, a warm week with joy, some with fearful anticipation. <laughs> Lord, how have we come to the beginning of this week? Lord, may you assure us of your presence with us. Lord, we think of uh, Richard and Sue as they move 
over these coming days. That challenge of packing up home and moving it to a new place. Finding places for things in a new place. Storing away perhaps those things that don't have a place in the new place. What does that mean for us in this week, for those of us that, are, that remain? Just to ponder how in the constant change of this world, there are things that we take with us, things that we leave behind. The Lord be with us in our journeying this week. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Activity that surrounds us in this town center. People starting their working week, perhaps for some, <clears throat> just uh, part of a, a week that starts on Saturday, perhaps, who knows? Or different people, different ways of working. It's the activity that takes place around us. Be with people whose work stimulates them, is part of who they are, and bless others who, for whom their work is just a is just a daily grind. So, Lord, be all in their work today, and we pray for those too who have uh, don't have enough activity, who long for it but don't have it. Paid activity, voluntary activity. So Lord, we pray for all that's happening around us and for all the people that gather in this place, as customers, as clients, as those working, those just here to be. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. I'm just noticing on the list of people to pray for uh, today um, is the media, the arts. Yeah. I'm just thinking that media have been quite frenzied this last couple of weeks for reasons we were aware of. And that takes quite a toll on their, their home lives. And we just pray for everyone in, in the media and in the national media that um, they, they have a few quiet weeks. <laughs> I don't think it's going to matter. Just that we will be with them. Yeah. Bombing is on the list as well, and the heat wave is particularly difficult for them because work doesn't stop. It's hot, and hot stuff to be to be gathered in. Which the um, heat wave in Hong Kong is only big effect on that. Just pray for people in the media and farming. Mm. As to your Holy Spirit, bless them. They uh, feel your presence. Conscious of both in our public lives reacting to to the press in you know, probably not the most helpful ways, um, but then again the press reacting to people in public life in perhaps not the most helpful ways. So Lord, we pray that um, that those relationships between those seeking to uh, report the news or in some cases make the news, uh, the Lord may have tender hearts. Whilst it's a, a business and an activity, we, we pray that there can be compassion and mercy in that. And also for those in the public eye, we'll give them patience and strength, but also um, give them an awareness of their responsibility in how they behave towards the press. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah.
think who were church this this week um, and in the uh, areas around Stourbridge in the Dudley uh, in the Dudley Deanery, uh, the Road to Dudley Deanery, and uh, we pray for St Thomas's in Stourbridge today. The Lord, we offer that church to you. They ask us to pray for their church wardens and fab fabric team as they're working on a, a significant project to update the main building of their church, um, making it uh, fit for mission and ministry in this time and into the next into the next hundred years or more. It's been 150 years since the last update, and they need um, yeah they need to do some work to make that building um, help them serve the present and future generations of that community. The Lord give them wisdom in what they're doing. Give them your foresight your uh, vision for that church now and in the future we pray for andrew Sillis and sarah malpass as they as they work in that church and sarah uh, a new curate as our sarah is <laughs> and lord we pray for them as they journey together in that place lord in your mercy yeah. stillness we lift to you those known to us those who need to know your love this day those who simply need to know your embrace and lord we pray too for those who need to know your healing touch healing in body mind or spirit come holy spirit People may be thinking of people locally, neighbours, people in our own households. We may be thinking of people further afield. So today we think of the church in Mara in Tanzania, Bishop George. People there in need in body, mind or spirit. Lord, may your church serve them. May you pour out your spirit. Just to to benefit Nicaea and uh, that foundation of, of monasticism and how that in the in our times when there is much thought of what new monasticism means how to live out a monastic pattern in our daily lives. Morning prayer in this form being a small part of that. And Lord, eternal God, who made Benedict a wise master in the school of your service and a guide to many called into community to follow the rule of Christ. Grant that we may put your love beyond all else and seek with joy the way of your commandments. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. 
Lord, bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Well, and you, you can tell us about <clears throat> Benedict. Uh, Benedict, I can. Um, it's quite long, so I won't read all of it. Uh, but what we need to know, that's what I'll read. Um, the rule of life that was just mentioned in the um, collect. Uh, St. Benedict drew on ascetic tradition, including the life of Anthony and the rule of the master. Benedict's rule is not a list of instructions on how to live as a monk, but rather guidance offered in humility by a person of long experience in the Christian life. Um, so I'm just going to whiz to the end because there's a whole lot more. You can find out all more about it, I'm sure, on the internet. <laughs> um, but Benedict taught that the spiritual side of a person could not be divorced from any other part. For him, the whole of life is spiritual because God calls the whole person and the whole person is to respond to God. And he's called the father of Western monasticism because that sort of rule spread throughout the West, and that's why he's known as that. Yeah. And the, the Cistercian monks that were here in Redditch would have followed uh, a modified version of his rule. Uh, the Cistercians, I think, thought it hadn't gone far enough. <laughs> I think that was it. I can't remember which way it goes. It goes one of two ways um, with many things in the church. Uh, we either think we aren't being strict enough or we're being too strict. And uh, I think that the Cistercians went stricter, more strict um, in terms of how to follow the rule. Um, Yes, you can look it up. I'm not even look it up. It's quite long. It is quite long. I didn't read it all. No, the rule, the rule is quite long. Uh, my memory of it is, is as well that that um, often uh, in uh, houses, places of community, I sometimes we'd visit a group of nuns and they they'd write it out. You'd write it out yourself in, in your own, so you'd have your own handwritten book with the rule in it, which is a good way of learning anything. It is interesting. <laughs> good. Well, thank you for joining us, however you, we, well, however successfully we've been in this. Um, and we will work on this week trying to work out how we do this a bit more seamlessly. Um, yeah. So thank you for joining us. And uh, we hope to catch up with you soon.